Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Mr. Di Catarina. Um, and now we say uh, a warm welcome uh, to Ms. Um, Sumaira Isaacs. Uh, she's CEO um, of uh, uh, the World Tourism Forum, and we are uh, particularly grateful uh, that you are with us uh, today because you are connected from Toronto and in Toronto it's not even five o'clock in the morning. Uh, so um, uh, thanks a lot for uh, being with us. Vous avez une longue expérience dans le secteur du tourisme. You have a lengthy experience in, in the uh, tourist sector, industrial tourism and business tourism. So thank you so much for being with us. Uh, joining us from the other side of the world and so early in the morning. You have eight minutes. Thank you very much. And thank you for welcoming me. And I want to start off by thanking the, the chair of the committees and the MEP for inviting us. And just to put it in perspective, World Tourism Forum Institute is a think tank based out of UK, actually. And today I happen to be in Toronto. Uh, but uh, so we are all about making tourism part of the economic development uh, agenda for developing countries. Uh, so today I've, I'm listening to my speakers uh, before uh, myself. I think I want to present a little bit more the global perspective uh, on, on tourism and then we can narrow it down to Europe. As we all know, the back-to-back -back crisis of COVID-19 pandemic and now the current geopolitical challenges at the heart of Europe being at war has been the most significant disruption to global travel and tourism in the history of the industry. Despite unprecedented levels of government intervention to help global tourism businesses brace themselves against the prolonged and pronounced impacts, the tourism industry has been suffering deep losses. This is creating a permanent change in the industry economics and shifting travel prospects, expectations and opportunities while also shaping an unequal recovery. I wish to help this committee to evaluate the impact of these crises on the industry as well as uh, identify and understand the key potential tre uh, trends uh, that will have the direct impact on connectivity in tourism, uh, which is today's topic. So today, more than half, 54% of the world's population live in urban areas, according to the data from the United Nations, which is set to rise by 70% by 2030. The speed and ease we can get around the city have a significant bearing on those who live and work or travel there. Mobility is becoming a smart platform powered by connectivity, real-time data, AI, and blockchain uh, technology. And so innovation and collaboration between governments and transport providers and mobility companies is absolutely criti uh, critical. The, there is more wealth within the city limits of New York than the whole of Canada. London generates the same GDP as Netherlands, and if Tokyo were a nation on its own, it would be the 15th largest economy in the world. And tourism sits at the heart of all of these metropolis cities. But the link between the city size and productivity is weakening, this slowing mobility alongside housing being the major contributing factors. The reason, pressure on public transport infrastructure. At peak travel times, for example, Birmingham, the UK's second largest city, behaves like a city of th um, third of its population in terms of, of economic output. It is by no means an outlier. Therefore, it's apparent that in, on socioeconomic macro level, there is a big shift that will continue to affect the businesses and communities. There are certain drivers uh, which will affect uh, the, uh, the industry as a whole, but, um, but also the society, both short and long term. Even as the pandemic is fast receding, uh, the current geopolitical challenges have left us with uncertainty. Uh, increased spending is evident across multiple income tiers. At the same time, costs are rising. Prices for airlines, hotel stays, food and car rentals have all soared as part of a larger in inflation trend uh, amid supply chain issues. The way income and prices play together in the future will determine the overall travel uh, demand. 
Also, uh, there has to be a culture of inclusion and diversity. The tourism sector can drive that social chain uh, in innovation, creativity, and competitive advantage in workplace and across uh, the industry while making the tourism sector more meaningful to current uh, customers and employees alike. Climate change is another um, area where travel and tourism accounts for about 8% of global climate emissions. The, uh, some of the speakers have spoken about greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets by 2030, which will further impact insurance premiums for operators high, in high-risk areas, indirectly increasing also operating costs and prices for consumers, along with the intensity and the frequency you know, of extreme weather events. Then there is uh, the, the trend for high accelerated uh, digitization by three to four years. Perhaps the best legacy of the pandemic has, uh, uh, has been in the favor of connectivity and mobility. That uh, companies are fast adapting for their uh, uh, customers. There's geo-targeting and localization and, uh, has become more prevalent. And data can be used as a solution in near real time to monitor airport capacity, source markets, booking trends, impacts of programs, and job sentiment. Then the most, one of the most recent interesting ones from my perspective has been the blockchain and uh, crypto, which is set to disrupt the industry. We just recently did a conference in Dubai where some of the MAPs from the European Parliament also participated, and we have just launched the first uh, travel and tourism dedicated Riva digital coin. So tourism and blockchain technology is powerful combination and is poised to revolutionize uh, the way the people travel, as it can bring safety, transparency to several critical touch points, increasing the level, uh, level of trust among all involved parties. For most of us, crypto still seems like a world unknown. However, as more users invest and subsequently have more uh, coins, uh, to use, they, uh, they, it is an idea which is fast spreading. And um, governments and businesses are warming to the idea, allowing consumers to purchase goods and services. In fact, El Salvador's uh, government, for example, passed a law in 2021 that makes Bitcoin legal tender within its borders. More uh, governments will follow suit, and it then benefits from uh, the new age travelers. Then there are some other uh, major trends which are taking uh, place. You know, there is a lack, uh, lack of access and reduced transport connectivity, uh, which some uh, we have just spoken about in short to medium term availability of transportation, both air and ground and rail, is limited, posing barriers to connecting travelers with their destinations. Um, there is a shortage of labor and, and uh, skill shortages, uh, supporting innovation, retraining, upskilling in workforce development and support services is absolutely uh, critical. There is a serious drop in service standards um, uh, because of the, a lot of businesses are scaling back and struggling. There is reduced access to capital and limited liquidity. According to a recent PWC study, 74% of lenders and 67% of equity investors indicated tighter underwriting standards of hotel investments and development prospects. And other than that, there are some new trends. Um, there is a great resignation and retirement as more and more boomers are uh, retiring. And But this is a new segment with time and money for, the, for travel uh, and a key audience that operators are considering to tapping into. Then uh, there is a trend of a remote or digital nomads. Uh, destinations are beginning to offer remote visas and other programs for this uh, new uh, uh, traveler and uh, uh, who uh, will provide a different kind of connectivity and visitor experience beyond what's offered for short-term stays. For, um, so it's absolutely important uh, to pay attention to them. In short, the next couple of years, travel and tourism will become more lo local and domestic, focusing on leisure travelers, facing increased competition, and uh, adapting to a digitized society and continuously uh, evolving. So there is an urgency to address these challenges today for tomorrow's opportun uh, opportunity. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.
thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to speak again. Uh, you know, so I, I just want to address a uh, couple of uh, questions or remarks posted by uh, the uh, Madame Josine, Josine and uh, Madame Contura. So I was listening with great interest all of the discussions uh, that are taking place, and I think I've been in particular been asked that, okay, uh, what are the solutions, what are the actions that can be taken? We all know that uh, connectivity uh, right now is playing a key role for the development of uh, uh, travel and tourism, especially in the, the double crisis of the pandemic and then now the, the Ukraine war. Um, how is it that we can safeguard uh, the, the sector? So I, I think that what is um, uh, one of the points that I mentioned already, that there is a lack and access and reduced transport connectivity, which I think all of the other sp speakers have touched upon, that in the short to medium term availability of transportation, both air, ground, rail, uh, uh, is limited, it's posing barriers to connecting travelers with their destinations, and that needs to be addressed not, not just on domestic level, but also on international uh, level as well. So it's very important that the governments talk to one another. As trusted advisors for many governments, uh, you know, we, we have a seat uh, uh, whereby they are asking us the same question that, okay, what are the low-hanging fruits? Where is it that we can have the biggest and the largest and the fastest and the quickest impact? And uh, we and one area is the labor and the skill show, so, uh, shortage. So going forward, diminished, diminished workforce capacity and lack of training will be a major challenge to the industry, and uh, and it's getting more acute. So supporting innovation, training, upskilling, and workforce development and support services is critical. Also to develop um, uh, support uh, and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, small businesses, that's absolutely essential. So the, uh, then there is a serious drop in service standards. The pandemic has revealed that the fragility of tourism business, with many struggling to survive, some having to make even the hard decisions to drastically scale back operations, downgrading the quality of experience delivered, or, to, um, or they are choosing to simply close shop. So there is absolute essential uh, requirement that, uh, fe mm, that the government step up. So federal uh, emergency support programs have provided an essential lifeline, but are not enough. So I think those uh, subsidies, grants, uh, they, they need uh, to continue for a longer period. And there are some countries were really forthcoming with these in the initial days of the pandemic, but then in the, I think the second year, they sort of stop. So uh, businesses are still struggling. Borders are still in the, in the process of uh, opening. You know, the, so the and, and the opening has been uneven. So I think it's very important for the governments to recognize that they then the support needs to be there. Then I talked about that there is a reduced access to capital and limited liquidity. And, and this is very, very evident, you know, so that means that the, uh, the lenders and the equity investors, there is a tighter underwriting standards for, for the larger infrastructure investments, for hotel investments, development prospects, uh, you know, um, uh, in certain parts of the world, the similarly in Europe, you know, uh, and, and uh, the investors are shifting. They are going away, actually. They are going more towards Africa, Middle East, where the governments are more forthcoming and are welcoming uh, and actually are loosening up uh, the legislations a little bit. The, the exceptions to capital scarcity has been in the knowledge and tech-based startups, as illustrated by the initial public offerings of industry disruptors such as Air. BNB and Uber, which is good news. That means there is more opportunities, uh, you know, for these sort of startups. But I think we have to look at the problem as a whole. So infrastructure development is absolutely critical in travel and tourism because it creates jobs and, um, and it has a long-lasting impact. Uh, 
So uh, other than that, um, you know, um, I've already touched upon that there, the, there has to be a um, product development, rethink of the products, and, uh, you know, com more community-based indigenous uh, travel, remote health and well-being tourism. And then there's also a rise in the affluent travel boom. Of course, because the rich can afford the rise, rising cost. So this is a, but, uh, but a segment that needs to be tapped uh, into as well. So in conclusion, uh, while the next normal will evolve quickly in the short and the medium terms, in 2022, the industry must start to shaping its future by, by engaging with talking uh, with other countries because no one country can solve it alone. According to one major, major mobility expert, in the next 15 years, the inability of cities and current connectivity systems around the world to meet the growing demand will result in a travel capacity gap of equivalent to some distance as going to the moon and back 25,000 times. Therefore, there is an urgency to address these challenges for, uh, today for tomorrow's opportunity. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ms. Uh, Isaacs.